Hello class, we're going to review a little bit first on passive transport just in general and then we will move on to the two parts we missed, facilitated diffusion and diffusion through ion channels. So first as a quick review, passive transport is when you do not use energy. So there's no ATP used, or that's our energy molecule. Um, this just happens on its own just based on the energy that's just naturally in uh, molecules. So all particles are in motion, solids, liquids, and gases, they're all in motion, and these particles will just continue to move in the direction they're going until they run into something and then go a different direction. Um, when we're talking about diffusion and osmosis, which we had had in the last set of notes, um, we're looking at particles trying to get to equilibrium, and these particles will travel across the membrane on their own without any help. So in diffusion, there the goal is trying to get to equilibrium. Uh, for all of these, actually, the goal is trying to get to equilibrium where there's equal parts concentration to um, of solute to solvent on each side of the cell membrane. So if this is yellow here, this yellow here is a cell membrane, um, then we're looking at the concentration becoming equal on both sides. With diffusion, we're looking at the actual particles going across the cell membrane. And in diffusion, particles have to be small or they have to be nonpolar to cross through the membrane without any help. One of the key things um, with this is that they are small. We'll show that here. And they will go down the concentration gradient to reach equilibrium. You guys went through all these notes the other day. And the key thing here is that we're looking at maybe like a mass of sugar, or in this case ink, that falls into a container. And in this case it's a container, but normally we'd be talking about maybe in the cell membrane or outside the cell membrane. And all of those particles just break up over time to spread out and fill up the whole space. So diffusion across this membrane will depend on the size, shape, and chemical makeup. Now we've already talked about all that. That was in our past set of notes. What we're going to get to today is looking at facilitated diffusion, things that don't fit across the membrane on their own because they either are too large or they're polar. Now one of the key parts about osmosis is that while water is polar, it happens to be small enough. So it fits through the membrane without any help because it is small enough. And water traveling across the membrane is called osmosis. So diffusion are particles, water is osmosis. A key part to osmosis is the fact that we are just talking about water crossing the membrane. So there still are other particles that are involved. It's just that those other particles are too large to cross the membrane. So they can never get to equilibrium. They are stuck where they are. They're either stuck inside the cell or they're stuck outside the cell. So instead of those particles, those large particles, maybe a sugar molecule or something like that, crossing the membrane, then sh water will cross the membrane and try and even out the concentration levels. So it would be as if you had a really high concentration um, Kool-Aid on one side of a membrane and you had a really low concentration Kool-Aid on the other side. The Kool-Aid itself could not cross the membrane because it is too uh, large, but the water could pass through. And so the water will pass through trying to equal out the two sides concentration. And eventually the goal would be that you would be able to take a drink from either side and it would taste exactly the same. So in a situation with osmosis, we're looking at water crossing the membrane. We have this situation here, which is isotonic, meaning water goes in and out of the membrane at equal amounts, just based on the kinetic theory of those particles, the kinetic motion of those particles. In hypotonic, we have a cell here that has gained a whole bunch of water. And the reason it has done that is because there was a high concentration of solutes on the inside of that cell. And so water rushed in trying to equal out the concentration. And when it did, it made that cell get bigger and expand. And eventually what could happen is it could burst. And if that happens, that's called cytolysis. So the cell dies. Another situation is hypertonic. And in this case, the concentration of solutes is greater on the outside of the cell. And so water will rush out of the cell trying to even out that concentration level. When water rushes out, the cell shrinks and becomes smaller. And then 
it generally can't carry out its normal functions. It's like being dehydrated. So hypertonic would be a dehydrated individual. Water has rushed out of that cell. There's no more water there. It's trying to even out the concentration of maybe salts or um, electrolytes that are in the bloodstream. And so water rushes out of that red blood cell. Now in plants, if you look at this next picture, in plants there work a little bit different. So we have our red blood cells here at the top. In plant cells, a hypertonic cell is going to be a withered cell. It's not going to look very good. That plant's going to wither up. In isotonic, it's an okay plant. You're like, eh, it looks pretty good, but it's not great. In plants, being hypotonic is great. It really puts a lot of turgor pressure on the cell wall and makes the plant stand up really nice and full. Okay, so that's our review of osmosis and diffusion. And now we're going to look at two other characteristics of diffusion. Facilitated diffusion and diffusion with ion channels. Both of which still require no energy. So facilitated diffusion is when we use a carrier protein and those are those proteins that go all the way across the membrane. And those proteins are just going to help things cross the membrane. One of the ways I'll describe it sometimes is um, at, at, if you are at a crosswalk, you might have somebody there to help you cross. Or maybe just a crosswalk itself is like a carrier protein. It's a place where you can cross safely and nobody is supposed to uh, hit you. They're supposed to slow down before they get to you. And so that's kind of the idea. It's a safe place for you to walk across and cross this busy lane of traffic. If that road were a cell membrane, it would be crossing through the crosswalk, something like a sugar molecule. So particles that are too big or they are polar, they will pass through facilitated diffusion. There are specific carrier proteins for specific molecules. So a glucose molecule will only fit into a carrier protein that is meant for a glucose molecule. An amino acid will only fit in a carrier protein that is made to carry amino acids. These products still move down the gradient, so they go from high concentration to low concentration, and they're still not using energy. Now, another version of diffusion is diffusion with ion channels. And ions are just charged particles. Things like sodium with that plus one, or chlorine minus um, one, or calcium plus two. You can see some of them down here, um, calcium, potassium, sodium. And those are things that have been dissolved and so now they are an ion. They have given up or taken electrons. And basically these proteins are specific to one type of ion. And you can see here they've color coded them in the picture. Um, the proteins are green, or sorry, the potassiums are green. The K is going only through a green channel and the sodium is a purple and it's only going through the purple channel. And so they are specific to the type that they'll allow to, cr to cross. Some common ions that are used and that we'll talk about are sodium, potassium, chlorine, and calcium. So these are the uh, diffusion, the four types of diffusion. Regular diffusion, osmosis, facilitated diffusion, and diffusion through ion channels. Those four are all passive transport, no energy is being used.